uh, Geopolymer International. We are producing right here in North America. We're the first company and only company developing Geopolymer, which is the magical ink that we're going to use for our 3D printing. We also have a 3D printer, Carstasian type of printer. It's a lightweight printer. It only takes two guys, roll up on a trailer, two guys erect the, the machine, and you're printing the next day. We're also building our first 3D printed house right here in Las Vegas. Uh, that'll be later this year, and it's underway right now, but we'll use it for a display thing. We'll invite you out again for that, and maybe you can help us do a little 3D printing. I'm a general contractor, been licensed for over 30 years in Southern California. I'm also a licensed contractor in the state of Washington, soon to be here in the state of Nevada, and I've uh, worked on all sorts of high-end custom homes. I've built some pretty exotic and wild homes. So I've kind of was looking at retiring out of getting out of wood framing and I'm just kind of got burnt out on construction. Then I ran across 3D printing and I fell back in love with it. So instead of retiring, I'm launching a new business. So we're going to be 3D printing homes. It's the way of the future. People don't want to work now since, especially since COVID. I don't know where they all went, but no one's coming back to work. Robotics is the future. Robotics is the, how a lot of things are going to be done. And uh, a lot of people getting into technical, all the youth today are getting technical about running computers and everything. Come join our team. We need somebody to run our computer, run the, driving that 3D printer. Where do you see uh, the real value coming in the technology in contrast to William? Well, definitely the amount of guys on the job site, because you're going to need six or eight guys to wood frame a house. Then you have the wood waste. You've got to have to cut lumber and throw that chunk of wood away. Then you got the, the, the mold problem, the termite problem, the burning problem. And uh, this geopolymer will last 10,000 years. It uh, was built, they built the pyramids with it. They built Angar Wat with it. If you look all around the world, if you look at Machu Picchu, that was done with geopolymer. The Mayans used it, the Greeks, the Romans. They didn't have a clinker plat back then to create Portland cement. So now this is a lost formula. It's been come back around and geopolymer, it's the future. It's fireproof, waterproof, and acid resistant. It uh, sets up 10,000 PSI in one day. You can, uh, with geopolymer, you can 3D print the walls 10 feet high in one day, whereas Portland concrete, you'll have to wait. You can only print a couple feet high, have to wait for the mud to dry before it can carry some more weight. Then you'd have a cold joint. You have to put epoxy system in there to join the two, two lifts together. That's just time consuming and with all the weight and everything. Um, the labor, it only takes two guys to run the machine. So instead of six guys, eight guys on your framing crew, you only have two guys on the printing, uh, one guy running the computer, making sure it stays on track, other guy filling the hopper. Actually need a third guy for going in there and making sure your electrical outlets are cut into the wall and your lintels are set for your doors and your windows. I'm the owner of Geopolymer International. Uh, I have some associates around the world that we've been able to develop some uh, unique formulations. Uh, we are a mortar company that has actually gotten into the 3D printing. The main reason that we got into 3D printing is the characteristics that we can provide in our binder, our concrete, are far superior to that than they have now in Portland Concrete. Portland Concrete's a very dirty material. It's the third dirtiest industry in the world. It's um, one ton of Portland, one ton of CO2, and it's the second most used material on the planet. Cement is a, a term that, this is cement. It's not a Portland cement. Okay. So we have, uh, our basically our materials are made from industrial waste and recycled materials. As opposed to lime-based. Well, well, let's talk about Portland. Portland binds by calcium. Geopolymer binds by silica, glass. So we have a little bit different characteristics where Portland only lasts 30 to 40 years. You can Google it. We last for 10,000 years because we're making more of a rock than we are uh, concrete. Uh, we don't use any water. Portland uses over 1 trillion liters of fresh water a year. We use very, very little. We clean up in it, we filter it, and then recycle it. But our big claim to fame is we're now instituting recycled materials, wood chips. It chemically petrifies the cellulose so it becomes fireproof. 
We use polystyrene, rubber tires, plastic bottles, all into a concrete that's fireproof, waterproof, and acid resistant. So a lot of the environmentally friendly part of the material is that it lasts 10,000 years. So instead of having to build uh, 100 regular concrete homes, just build one home out of this material and it lasts the 10,000 years span. Well, you won't be rebuilding it, but if you want, you can. Because unlike Portland concrete, we can actually crush this up and reuse it. Wow. So it's recyclable where you can't do that with the other base. And the process, uh, you have the dry mix and then there's an additive, a liquid additive? Well, the, the process of geopolymer is a lot different. One thing that I have to explain is that there is a misconception in alkaline activated concrete to geopolymers. They're not the same. One uses lye or um, sodium hydroxide, which is very hot, and they powder it and put it into their mix and they add water. If it gets on your skin, it burns you. Ours is no stronger than soap, but we are a liquid and binder, a reagent, and when we mix it together, we continue to mix it until it becomes a polymer, a polymerization of our material, and then we add our aggregates. That makes it completely fireproof, waterproof, acid resistant, because it doesn't have the same consistency in water. Um, Portland's not wa fireproof because it has trapped water inside. We can use this in freezing weather where they can't. So um, the biggest advantage to 3D printing, since we don't have water, it doesn't shrink. With shrinkage, you get cracking. You have to put expansion joints. And ours can print from the floor all the way to the top of the building without stopping because we have a cure rate that is at the time set. Um, Portland has to stop every 10 to 12 layers and then cure and come back and reprint the next day. One of the other issues is we don't have cold joint. It fuses together a week later, so there's not that same issue with bonding that, that Portland has. So we're a completely different type of material, and it lends itself tremendously for uh, 3D printing. I'm sure you experiment with lots of different uh, material options. When it comes to geopolymers, are you limited to silica binding chemistry, or are there other uh, routes to go? There are other routes. Um, some of them are not as safe. Um, we basically use, um, just for the chemistry, say we use a fly ash, which we don't recommend because we don't want to use uh, uh, fly ash or burn co uh, coal to make it. We're trying to go more environmental, but if you use fly ash, you're active, actively um, reacting off the alumina in there. And now we have a uh, ferrous silate, which is we're reacting off of uh, iron or the red clay or what we call adobe. So we're expanding out to different chemistries to use different both minerals and industrial waste. This almost resembles the color of regolith, but that's a good coincidence. The, the, the color was added. This has come from Renka, our associates in Russia. And we added color because a lot of people were buying the product and putting it out and claiming it as their own. We do have um, different colors from different minerals that we can use. And the light color, you can add, the, add whatever Portland coloring you want. It's not going to interfere with it at all. Really focused on creating recycled materials into our concretes. One of the things that I said before was that it chemically petrifies the cellulose. So this is now an aggregate. It's, it's, it's not flammable. As you can see on the phone behind us, we do both polystyrene and wood, um, and it's completely fireproof. So it doesn't um, lend itself to becoming more of a, a, a problem. And this is also um, waterproof completely. And as I was telling you before, the uh, cold joint, after a week, it bonds to itself. This is some of our new printer material that we've kind of aerated to puff it up a little bit, but we also made it a little bit stronger. And then we have aerated concrete, and this is uh, rubber tires that we recycle into it. This is hemp. Um, and the nice part, since it bonds to itself, you can coat that over with uh, some concrete after you put your plumbing and electrical in, and then you have a, a smooth wall. Are these all using the same binding agent? Yes. And are they all waterproof? They're all waterproof and fireproof. Wow. There hasn't been an improvement in construction for 60 years, 
Um, this is this is a game changer. What was the improvement you're referring to 60 years ago? Oh, well, if you want to go 92 years, that was Portland. Okay. Portland's only been around for 100 years. So before that, it was different mixes. And that's what we have back-engineered this into finding out how did they make the pyramids? How about the limestone aqueducts in, in Rome? So we've kind of gone back and looked at that and then re-engineered things that we can have readily available here. That's online. fascinating. We are very, very far behind the rest of the world. Um, Europe, Asia are leading the edges, not only in 3D printing, but in some materials. Um, and I'm the first one here in the United States to bring this product here and start the manufacturing. So if somebody wants to get in touch with you, what's the best way for them to reach you? Geopolymerinternational.com or gpi.earth. Um, will take us to the same website and then you can uh, get our phone number if you want to call us, e email us. Uh, we're here to help put the information out to get it to everybody, especially the 3D printers because it lends itself to a much better medium to print with than what's available now. I think there are some companies uh, that I've filmed in the past that would like to experiment with geopolymers. If they have a system running regular concrete right now, could it run your material as well? No, the mixing is different. It's a high shear mix. And since we, we, we do little tiny batches, if we do um, a cubic yard of concrete and put that through a printer, the time that that takes to print out, it's going to have to have a set time or a pot time that, to be able to use that. So if we use little batches going through there, our set time is 45 minutes. So that gives us the ability that the geopolymer is hardening from the outside to support those upper layers. Everybody else has to stop and let it cure. We want to go from the floor all the way to the top. Mixing process, mechanically, is it mechanical or are you hand mixing the material? No, it's a mechanical. We actually make our own mixers. We have a computerized um, self-feed, um, self-cleaning mixer for geopolymer. And it will, our big one kicks out um, 2.8 uh, cubic meters every five to seven minutes. I have a 40 meter one here because as I say, I don't want to make a lot of material because it's all, once you mix it, it's starting to dry, it's starting to cure. And you want to get that through the machine and you want it to cure in your building, not in your machine. And what's your time frame for that like? 45 minutes is what our printing mortar is set for right now. If it gets hotter outside, we have to chill it out because it will set up faster. But at this weather, 65 degrees, it's perfect. Can you show me the picture of the printer? This is our printer. And do you sell that printer? Yes, we do. Uh, we want everybody to have a printer because then they have to buy more mortar. But we're, we're open to working with whomever because my feelings is it's very important that the next generation get into this technology, but they're getting into it with something sustainable. We're 90% more sustainable than Portland Concrete, and we use industrial waste and recycle, so I believe that that would be a better direction for people to go than to continue using a, a, a concrete that's actually creating pollution. Do you have any information you can share about the costs, like per yard or per ton? Well, uh, here in the United States, it's going to be when we get the plant done, we'll know. I shipped it in from Europe, and it was coming out about 30 cents a, a pound. So it's reasonable. Portland's like seven cents a pound. Then also you add 53% uh, sand, which is 40 bucks a ton. So you can make it thinner, so you're not running at six, 7,000 PSI. You can take it down to 25, which is 2,000 PSI is all you need to print with. Uh, How do you convince engineers to recognize the structural integrity of a printed geopolymer wall without rebar? Uh, I don't suggest we not use rebar okay. because you still have certain uh, um, criteria that's required through the International Building Code. The IBC is very, very specific and I think that it's important for the strength of the walls. Engineering-wise, you're going to have to have some kind of support because if it cracks, what's going to hold it together? And earthquakes are uh, happen and you're not going to get past that. The only thing that we can take advantage of is that ours won't have a problem with flooding and with 
fire. But then the strength of it, we might not need as much reinforcement that everybody else does. But still, I don't suggest to not have it at all. And then with the ones that they're using nowadays in Portland, they got to kind of have more because they're basically only printing their, their mold. They print a column and then core pour it for the strength because they have to meet the standards for engineering. I think that we really need to get into the more sustainable methods of printing. Printing is one third the cost of re regular construction, but having the time I do in construction, I'm looking for printing post-tension cable panels for roofing and everything else. Uh, I have a little bit more experience um, here in construction and the concrete industry and I really want to get into high-rise commercial printing. I've already filed a patent for a cartridge and I have some designs for printers that I'm really ready to go after. Do you happen to know if the compressive strength of the like this material, let's say? Or? Well, this, this runs anywhere from um, 8 to 10 if you have the right sand. Right now here in Vegas with sand from Home Depot, it's about 6,700 uh, 6, PSI. But we have mixes that we can go higher. This is a 19,600 PSI piece of concrete. Um, and we have gotten some cobalt sand and have gone higher than that. So we have some exciting things that we can start bringing forward, but also we can do really high strength for less. You can't do this with Portland. By the time you get up to 12, 15,000 PSI with Portland, it's more chemicals than it is Portland. So we're looking at being able to help engineering, design um, for the future.